Hi, in this tutorial we're just going to have a look at the acid dissociation constant, Ka. Sometimes it's known as the acidity constant too. This is really for weak acids. Let me just write that down actually. So weak acids, something like um, ethanoic acid or something, it's called a weak acid. Okay, and it's a way of describing the extent to which um, the equilibrium lies over to this side. So if we added, for example, uh, ethanoic acid that we've got here, sometimes called acetic acid, into water, we would find that um, not all of it would give um, rise to all these protons. So it wouldn't go, for example, it wouldn't be an arrow like this. It wouldn't go to completion. It, what would happen is some of this would be in equilibrium and it'd be, you'd have a certain amount of this, a certain amount of this, and a certain amount of this. Now, if we compare that with um, some a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, for example, and if I draw that in, in blue, so we've got HCl. When you add that to water, so that would be a gas, first of all, you add that to water, you would get complete dissociation, AQ, to give um, almost a, exactly the same number of protons in solution. Okay, so if we started off with one mole of this and added it to water, we would not get one mole of H plus. We get something that's defined by what's called the dissociation constant, the acid dissociation constant, which I'll show you in a second. If we added one mole of HCl to water, we would more or less get uh, one mole of H plus in there. Okay, so it'll go almost to completion. And that's what we talk about. That's the difference between strong, in this case, is a strong acid. So that's the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. Adding the same amount of these, number of molecules, if you will, to water gives you completely different values for H+. All right? So hopefully... Uh, that's cleared that a little bit. Okay, so what is the acid dissociation constant? Well, if I drag it in now, this is it. I'll just get rid of this. So basically, uh, the acid dissociation constant, Ka, is defined as the concentration of H+, plus multiplied by the concentration of our anion. Of course, this doesn't need to be uh, carboxylic acid. It can be any acid source. Um, divided by the initial concentration of the acid. So if I just write underneath um, what this is, so HA is our generic acid, if you will. This is A minus, this is our anion, and this is H plus. And that's where these values fit in there. So let's have a look at this equilibrium and see what this uh, means. So if we get a large K, Ka, so if Ka is large, what does that mean? Well, that means that this value on top is large. Okay, so this is larger than this one. If they were equal, then Ka would equal 1. Okay, so you've got an equal number of these and an equal number of this. If this is larger than 1, then that means this is more in favour of going over to this side, which means we'll have more H plus around here. And that means it's getting stronger as an acid, that this species gets stronger as an acid the more protons it can put into solution. If it's less than 1, if this value is less than 1, then it means it's more favoured over to this side and it's not a very strong acid. Okay, But the fact it doesn't completely dissociate means it's defined as a weak acid and it, an equilibrium is established and that's what this means. So a K is large, that means it's the acid is getting stronger. Stronger. Okay, but it's not defined as uh, a strong acid. And I'll, I'll write this up at the side as well because I, I do apologise for my handwriting. If Ka is small, i.e., less than 1. 
then that means it's getting weaker. Okay, the acid is getting weaker, and and that's basically um, the acid dissociation constant. Just want to um, end the tutorial a little bit on the the units that are used for this. I'll leave these words up at the side to just get rid of these for now. So let's have a look at the units. The concentration of a compound in solution is defined as moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, you've probably come across that many times now. So if we look at what um, what the units of Ka should be, we have, we take H+, plus, that's moles per decimeter cubed. A- minus will be moles per decimeter cubed. And that's all divided by moles per decimeter cubed. So you've got square of moles decimeter cubed on the top and that on the bottom. And if we do some simple maths, get rid of one, get rid of the other one like that, and we end up with that equals or Ka, the units of Ka, should be defined as moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, it's always important to add the units on onto the um, onto the value there. Now, just one last thing, just to um, get you thinking a little bit about this. Just to we touched on it a little bit earlier. Is what what would a dilute solution of ethanoic acid um, be like in one liter? And what would a dilute solution of HCl be like in one liter? Well, basically, this would be still be a weak acid. Okay, so if you added the same amount of this into one liter of water, this would still generate a weak acid. But if you had a small amount of HCl, same same kind of scale as that, like I, I said before, this is still a strong acid. Okay, you might if you add uh, 0 0.02 moles of HCl to a liter of water, it's still defined as a strong acid. Okay, and this will still be defined as a weak acid. So, this concentration here and the dissociation of this species defines whether it's a strong or a weak acid, and the acid dissociation constant is really for this kind of species because as I just mentioned if you put HCl no matter how much you put into that it's still defined as a strong acid because Ka will be more over to this side this will be so small and this will be really large okay so that's the acid dissociation constant bye for now